Welcome to my watercolor painting channel where I teach all the essential skills of watercolor and guide you through this beautiful medium. Become my patron to have full access to my watercolor tutorials which I upload to my channel weekly. Link to my patreon in the description down below. Before we begin, I would like to thank every single one of my patrons for their support and their help. Thank you so much guys, you mean the world to me. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I approach painting watercolor beetle. So I transferred beetle on my good quality watercolor paper, so I'm using 300 GSM cold press arches. And I am starting painting wet on dry and I'm using brush size number 8 from Paulina Bright. And I am using very light colors to start start with and uh, what I like to do I like to paint my first layer all in one go so I don't paint separately parts of the subject and white I uh, my first layer usually covers absolutely everything and I absolutely love doing it that way so um, on the right hand side you can see the uh, reference picture of my beetle and I am looking at the, my reference picture and I'm trying to see what are the lightest parts of the beat of the colors I can see so I can see pinkish colors I can see very light green colors so I'm applying this knowledge to my first layer and I am trying to cover and add all these colors to my first layer and I am not using a lot of pigment uh, I use rather a lot of water for this one and um, it allows me uh, to uh, get some moisture inside my painting and also um, I can add slight colors to sort of map out where everything is gonna be on the picture and once I've done and applied some of the layers I don't like having how some of the colors looking so I'm using lifting the pigment technique to lift it out and simultaneously I can add some more colors like here I'm adding more of emerald green and um, I like creating those blends on beetles and again here I mentioned that using a certain type of paper is very important with the time you will find out that some papers are works better for your style than others and and that's absolutely fine. So I left my painting to dry out overnight but it should be about three or four hours ideally for your um, first layer to completely dry out or overnight you can do either way so I'm using my brush size number six so I swapped to slightly smaller brush and I'm using more concentrated in color combination so I'm using um, Prussian blue mixed with emerald green and with pines grey and also for the next one for the next combination on the right I'm using pines grey mixed with burnt amber and I am painting my second uh, layer on the beetle and this allows me to sort of define more and uh, paint darker parts of the beetle um, in more detail again I'm applying a uh, rather dark co color combinations and then uh, with my clean brush I'm making it smooth so I wash my brush I dry it against the tissue and then I'm making it smooth so I uh, move my brush that way that it creates sort of gradient so all the color mixed with water going down on the previous layer and then after I know that my this part of the beetle that I'm working on is wet it allows me to add some more color and work on that area in particular so I'm applying um, darker color combinations and I'm allowing them to bleed so I'm not rushing uh, and again here I mentioned the paper that it's very important to know properties of your paper and you only figure out about this uh, with time uh, what works best for you so I am waiting in several um, in several goes and I'm adding some more paint and then with my brush I clean brush I am 
um, lifting the pigment from some of the areas that I don't like how the pigment is working with previous layers and at the same time while it's still wet I add some other color combinations so for this one I'm using purple lake and light red and burnt sienna here and I'm just dropping it in some areas on beetle shell and I like creating those colorful color combination however if you look on the picture well it's just black beetle but is it really so when I create my beetles I use the approach to see and use rather loads of different colors and I'm trying to see them even 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 if I see um, like a plain beetle I love to make it more colorful and add a lot of color combinations which are working beautifully here by the way my main aim is to create um, an illustration rather than hyper realistic picture that's why i am working so freely and i am adding some colors that are probably not 100 percent seen in the reference picture but like i said it's not my goal i want to create rather colorful and interesting um, illustration of the beetle so after I worked on one area of the beetle I'm moving down and I am using the same principle so I'm applying boldly color and then with my clean brush I'm blending it together I'm making it smooth with a previous layer by adding some water or just using clean but wet brush to blend it in and then after the area becomes wet I can add some more colors I can introduce some more colors um, adding them to the shell also here I want to uh, say that I am also looking at my reference picture and I am looking where all the darkest parts of the beetle um, on the reference picture where the shell separating into two sections where um, um, all the highlights so I'm roughly trying to apply this knowledge to my uh, painting and uh, at the same time while it's still wet I'm implementing more and more colors and um, like I said before it is very important the paper is very important for this sort of technique I would say that um, having paper 300 GSM or more uh, will help you to achieve everything that you want to do because um, with this with my technique I introduce gradually quite a lot of water and then it allows me to ply with colors and add them gradually or keep the area moist and then implement more and more colors but you do it gradually with lifting the pigment adding some more adding some more water you won't be able to do it with all the types of watercolor papers i would say that i would struggle to do it with a uh, hot pressed but it depends what hot pressed but <clears throat> here I'm saying if you want to try to um, do it yourself use cold press 300 GSM paper so I'm moving on painting my uh, beetle's legs and I'm using burnt sienna mixed with paint grey and I'm roughly looking at my uh, reference picture and uh, I'm trying to replicate all the details that goes all along uh, its beetle's legs with painting legs I am applying some color and then I'm applying some water and then I am lifting the pigment and I'm removing the extra color uh, from parts of uh, beetle's legs uh, just to give me a highlight because if you look at the reference picture it's quite shiny some of the legs um, and also at the same time I'm implementing some more colors like burnt sienna, burnt amber, pines gray but I won't be making all my legs legs are the same uh, so I will be adding some different colors to different legs so they will they will all look slightly different like uh, for the um, upper beetles legs I'm using burnt sienna and then I will be adding some more blue color and pines gray um, and then in the end I will add some other colors to make it more interesting I guess and then after I'm applied all the color to the leg I'm doing lifting the pigment so I'm trying to lift the extra paint in the middle of my um, leg and then 
while all the leg become wet it's a great time to add some more color because it will blend uh, really beautifully like a gradient for that reason you see I'm using uh, Payne's gray uh, so it's quite bold quite dark color I'm just dropping it and it's the right time where the paper become uh, quite damp it's not very wet so my as you can see all the bleeding isn't growing very very fast that means that paper become damp but it's an ideal time to work with the surface so it allows me to be in control of the paint spreading on the paper and here's a little close-up just to show you what I'm uh, trying to achieve so I'm trying to achieve the lightest part goes all across one part of beetles leg and it's highlighted so I like to make it that way it's very crucial in watercolor if you want to progress to understand when is the right time to apply paint so at the moment I'm using the opportunity where both sections of my beetle are dry so I am painting the middle section and I know that I will be applying that layer and it won't spread either upwards or downwards on my beetle that will create a really sharp borders in between my beetles parts that's the secret so I swap to my smaller size brush I'm using Pro Arte brush size uh, zero and uh, I waited till all my parts of the beetle went 100% dry and I'm painting all the uh, darkest parts on beetle shell adding some more detail as you can see I am uh, trying to add details I'm trying to add vertical lines that slightly reached and uh, also I'm trying to add uh, darker colors to some of the legs of my beetle and I'm using dark darker combination so it's a uh, burnt amber with some paints gray and they were they rather dark so they create nice contrast with previous layers and then I am uh, painting the middle of my beetle as you can see that uh, I've painted dark uh, colors uh, all across that part but left um, middle part untouched and then with my wet but clean brush I'm trying to make it smooth and uh, I'm swapping to the bigger size brush to make it even better and move that dark color away from the highlighted area. I wanted to add more tonal values to my painting so I'm using uh, Payne's Grey uh, to paint darker parts of my beetle so I'm adding it to the shady or really dark parts on my beetle and I'm using my brush size number six as you can see that I've done the same so I applied boldly this color to the darker shady part and then I washed my brush dried it against the tissue and then I just smooth it together and then I'm moving and only adding water around it and um, it allows me to work with uh, this area precisely and I'm also implementing some more colors and using emerald green and I'm adding it to the top part of my beetle and uh, I'm doing it exactly the same so it allows me to create a really nice and really interesting color combination and at the same time really different tonal values within one element of my beetle and I quite like blend them together and then it just I don't know it attracts me I don't know <laughs> what do you think <laughs> I guess for me watercolor is trying to control something that is almost impossible or very difficult to control because it moves so freely so for me I like to work with different layers when I create my paintings and I like to add some gradients some more bold colors and I'm trying to blend them together so you can see through different layers and it gives richness to your work and uh, I guess that's why I'm so attracted to watercolor for that simple reason that you are uh, creating something that is hard to control but you are trying to control <laughs> I hope it all makes sense <laughs> how do I add details on the lighter parts of 
my beetle. So I'm using quite watered down color combination to make a map where everything is gonna go. So I'm using my brush size uh, zero from Pro Arte, and as you can see that the color concentration on parts of my beetle are used unevenly, so I don't use the same richness of the color. Um, all across the beetle's shell. As you can see, them, I'm applying just a little bit where the highlight, and I know that my brush doesn't have a lot of water, doesn't have a lot of color, so I'm making sure that I won't spoil that um, highlight. And I know if I scoop some more color, that I will start from the darker part because it will be still dark, and then I will move uh, towards the highlighted area, and there, I will use a lot less color. That's the principle that I'm using when I'm painting my beetle. And I'm working here wet on uh, dry, but some of the areas uh, remain slightly wet, but I don't mind them blending together. So, But overall the shell is 100% dry. And I'm using the same color combination that I used for previous layers. So you can see here a little bit of pink, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of emerald, a little bit of uh, Payne's grey, a little bit of Prussian blue. So I'm working wet on dry and I'm just applying burnt sienna with light red to some parts of my beetle. I'm swapping occasionally to a smaller size brush. This is uh, 20 from Pro Arte and then I'm swapping again to a bigger brush to paint other parts of the beetle. As you can see that I'm just moving between colors and between um, my paint brushes quite often um, and also I'm here adding some details I'm adding some hair on beetles uh, body and I'm using just the tip of my brush and I'm using Payne's grey here just to add some details and uh, I'm constantly looking at my reference picture and um, thinking where to add more of those hairs on beetles legs maybe and also painting and adding some shady areas on its legs and uh, just giving some more details as I look closely on my beetle and at the same time I'm seeing the opportunity that I added this light red and burnt sienna to the horns of my beetle I'm using a, this to paint over um, using my brush size number um, two zeros from Pro Arte and as you can see I just pull this color down and I will come back to it uh, when I will be adding my final brush strokes but at the same time now I'm using my brush size number six and I'm painting eyes of the beetle and I am using paints gray first and then I'm adding burnt sienna um, in the middle of my eyes I've also decided to add some permanent rows to the shell of my beetle and then as I will be going down I will be adding more of uh, burnt sienna to the shell so it's a, it will be a nice combination of the colors. And then after that I will be adding my final touches and I'm using my brush size number 00 and I'm going to be painting vertical lines that goes across beetle shell and I'm using just the tip of my brush just to place some uh, brush strokes across beetle shell and I'm using emerald green for that purpose and I'm just applying it in some areas where it seems to be appropriate to have those greener details on the beetle shell. Moving on to my favorite part so uh, most of my beetle now 100% dry however there are some areas that I still need drying out and I'm using my brush size uh, 2 zero, so it's quite a tiny brush to paint those details so I'm making dots all across beetle's head and its legs and I'm also using um, 
burnt sienna to paint some more details i'm looking at my reference picture and i'm just judging where it needs to be adjusted and um, i'm also placing burnt sienna spots as well here is another close-up of my beetle see how i add those details i am placing with the tip of my brush and i'm repeating the shape of that bold black spot on beetle shell so and as i go away from it uh, the paint on my brush running out so they will become lighter all the brush strokes so the main principle i use that i want them to overlap previous layers so so they will be seen because they add a lot of detail a lot of structure to my beetle but at the same time simultaneously i don't want them to stand out so i don't will um, use black color to paint over headlines so this is it guys i hope you enjoyed watching it become my patron to have full access to my watercolor tutorials which i upload to my channel weekly. See you next time. Bye!